Today, we're diving into Note Plan, an app that organizes everything around the notes that you take. With Note Plan, your daily and regular notes become the foundation for managing tasks, scheduling events, and even planning projects. It's a productivity tool that links your thoughts, tasks, and calendar together, making sure nothing slips through the cracks. I can't wait to share my full thoughts on the app. Note Plan is partnering with me on today's video, but all thoughts and opinions of the app are my own. So let's jump in and explore how it works and who it's best for. Pricing. Let's talk pricing. Note Plan operates on a subscription model with two options. Choosing the annual plan breaks down to about $8.33 per month. If you want to try it out, see if it's for you before buying into it entirely. Note Plan does offer a seven day free trial. You can try it out on your Mac, your iPhone, iPad, or even the web. Now, Note Plan has two kinds of notes, daily notes or just other periodic notes that you might take and then regular notes. The idea is to manage your day inside the daily calendar notes and then plan projects, resources, or long-term areas of your life and work in the regular notes section of Note Plan. When tasks come up in projects or those long-term note-taking areas of your work, you can actually link those tasks to your daily notes by typing out the date like this or by typing something like tomorrow to schedule in your task. Speaking of linking, you can link between notes and connect related notes, ideas, and projects together through this back linking system. You can link notes together by writing the note title between double square brackets, this way, you're able to connect your notes to tasks and vice versa, so everything kind of just lives together in one place. Tasks are treated kind of like first-class citizens in Note Plan, so the app is always actively looking for the tasks that you write and even lets you search and filter them. And the main idea behind Note Plan is that you are being productive one day at a time without a huge, overwhelming list of tasks. You can focus more on the tasks that need to be completed today, but also filter up those tasks and notes from those bigger projects that just require a bit more steps to completion. So depending on your style of productivity, Note Plan is easily adaptable to it, which is why I wanted to share the core of Note Plan first before actually diving into the interface and its setup. Note Plan is great in that they even offer suggestions for ways to set up the sidebar, which is essentially the compass of your notes, whether you're a fan of the getting things done method, para, or the bullet journal method. There are great resources for finding a setup that works best for how your brain works and manages the tasks of the day. What I love about Note Plan is the calendar and reminders are natively integrated with macOS and iOS and everything just syncs so nicely here in the calendar sidebar. From that calendar sidebar, I can set reminders and events and even link them out to my notes. For example, if I have an important meeting or call, I can take notes about that meeting or call and link it out to tasks in Note Plan from the actual event in my calendar sidebar. I can also drag and drop tasks or events from my notes into that sidebar. From the calendar, I can also click or tap into specific days to look ahead and schedule tasks or plan my notes around future events or projects. On the left is the main sidebar where the rest of Note Plan lives. Here you can search or filter the information and notes that you have, and then you're able to access your calendar notes here as well. Remember how I said Note Plan has two different types of notes? This is the section of the sidebar for those periodic notes, whether it be daily, weekly, or seven day notes that you take. These are actionable notes for managing your day today. The next section of the sidebar are those regular notes that I mentioned before. This is for those longer term planning projects and just the areas of your life where you need that boost of productivity or management. And then close to the bottom of the sidebar are smart folders. This is where Note Plan does the lifting for you and organizes your notes by recent, archive notes live here as well, templates, and then the trash. I'll be diving into templates a bit more when I share how I've set up my own note plan, but they are exactly what it sounds like. Templates for quickly setting up a specific layout or format for your notes. And then here at the very bottom of the sidebar are tags. If you work with others in note plan, you can see the mentions filtered here. You're able to add people on the notes that you take and the tasks that you schedule. Similarly, you can set up hashtags for your notes for even more filtering options. 
to manage and organize what you add to your day notes or your projects. Under the settings, and then if you just scroll down to the general area, you'll find where you can actually customize which calendars you want visible in Note Plan. And particularly what I like here in the settings is the icon and theme customizations. So if I tap that, I can change the home screen app icon if I want to, but if I scroll a little bit further, you can see where I can actually change the theme of my notes and my calendars. I'm really loving this tooth bleach theme, but if you're a fan of dark mode, I find people who love Markdown, which is kind of core to note plan, are especially big dark mode fans. Um, and there's a number of really nice dark mode options in note plan. Dracula Pro just being one of my favorites for those. When you first get started with NotePlan, they have it set up like a para system. Para stands for projects, areas, resources, and archives. A project being a series of tasks that you need to complete, which are linked to a goal, and that project has a deadline. Areas are basically like responsibilities or activities, things that you need to maintain over time. This might be something like help, relationships, hobbies, internal work, things that you want to manage and organize that don't necessarily fit nicely into a deadline or a series of step-by-step -step tasks. Resources are topics, themes, links, files, notes, just anything that you might need to reference later. And then the second A is archives, and that's pretty straightforward. It's just inactive or hardly used items from the three previous categories, projects, areas, and resources. I think para makes a lot of sense for those just getting started in productivity, and it makes a lot of sense when you first get started with NotePlan. I share about para not only because it's how NotePlan is first set up when you get started with it, but it is actually something I've modified a bit for my own setup in NotePlan. I've essentially combined para and the bullet journal or junk journal approach. In my own note plan, I have a journal section. You can create a new folder or a note, by the way, by pressing the plus button to set it up. There's of course keyboard shortcuts you can use as well, like Command N for instance, to create a new note. I'm trying to make a better habit of journaling, so I wanted it to be a big pillar of my system and note plan. So for each journal note, I have it set to actually use a template. In note plan, you can use templates to quickly set up notes Depending on the project, event, or task, the template I used for my journal notes is one that I actually created. So I have it, the title of the template and what it is, you know, a note. And then I use just a little bit of code here to tell NotePlan that I'd like it to insert the current date when I go to create a new journal note just based on this template. And that's documentation that I pulled just directly from the NotePlan website. In order for me to stick with journaling, it needs to be short and quick. So I did a section for gratitude of the day, mountains and valleys or highs and lows, depending on how you wanna reference that and then a section for more extended journaling if I was in the mood to write a bit more. Sometimes when I'm journaling, if I remember an event or a task that needs to be completed, essentially me brain dumping while I'm journaling, then I can actually schedule that directly from that note and then have it reference into my daily calendar notes. I think this is fun and also an interesting way to journal because I find that when I do journal, sometimes it does just turn into a massive brain dump for me. And out of that brain dump comes new things I want to work on, something that I want to try, something that I might want to change or just remembering something that needs to get done. And rather than just jumping to a different note or a different page or something crazy, going back to this massively long list of things that I need to do, I can just write it and schedule it from within this journal note. Because chances are, if I remember a task or something while I'm journaling and then I leave my journal notes to go add it to a big to-do list or something, I'm not gonna go back to finish or work on my journal entry. And that's just a big goal of mine is to get better with journaling and kind of having a, almost a documentation or a history of what I'm going through. So next I have projects and this is where I kept some of that Paris system. Projects is a big part of my work life at least that I like to organize. And I'm choosing to not necessarily separate the work from the personal projects, but to just organize all of my projects into bigger folders if they fit and if it makes sense. So for instance, YouTube is a huge work project area and within YouTube there are various projects or videos that I'm working on 
like this one. So I have my notes for this video, my rough draft of a script, and then action items that I need to complete for the video to be complete. And because tasks and events are interconnected within the notes I take in note plan, I can actually plan and schedule them directly from my YouTube note plan note, rather than again, jump back and forth between these different task lists, which is how I managed it all before. And then I have a connect section. This is kind of, you know, building a little bit off of that para system and kind of really making it fit for kind of the main pillars of my own life. And this is currently where I like to store notes around the calls that I have, meetings that I'm in, conversations that I've had, maybe sponsorship notes or opportunities, and just different ways that I like to connect and engage with the community here or ways in which the community is engaging with me. And this is where the note leaking feature of NotePlan really shines for me because I can connect my notes directly to my meetings. And so when I click into a scheduled meeting on my calendar, it takes me to a linked note. And this is where I can write notes during the meeting or write out action items I might need to take before or after that meeting. And then finally, I have resources. Right now, this is where I'm storing my links for my hobbies and my art projects, tutorials or videos that I want to watch or refer to later and any notes that I find helpful in completing those certain projects in the previous kind of pillars or sections of my sidebar in NotePlan. And finally, since NotePlan already has a built-in archival system, I didn't feel the need to set up my own. So whenever a note is inactive or I no longer need to reference it, but you know, maybe I wanna to refer to it in the very distant future, I can just archive it. So what does a typical day look like for me when I am using NotePlan? First, I start with my daily calendar notes. I like to break down my daily calendar notes by errands, a main goal of the day, things that I like to focus on for the day, and then a daily log, which is just kind of like a tracker for things that I worked on or did that day. And not necessarily, I did this during this time kind of thing, but more like how I feel about the work I did and anything important that day that I think I'd like to remember. NotePlan uses Markdown, so if you're familiar with Markdown, it's super simple to get your thoughts out, or you can do a backslash and just select which formatting tools that you need from there. Throughout the workday, I might refer to my daily calendar notes often to access additional meeting or project notes depending on the events and the tasks of the day. At the end of the day, I take a look at tomorrow's events, see if there's anything, any meetings, things like that, important deadlines that I need to, you know, just have an idea of what task I might need to get done for the next day. And then I head to my journal notes to document my gratitude, my highs and lows of the day, and then write and reflect further if I want to. It's such a simple system, but no plan really lives up to the promise of being able to focus more and forget less. And I love the interconnectedness between the notes you take and the calendar events you schedule and the tasks that you create. It feels extremely lightweight and fluid and just very easy to use. It allows you to focus on just that rather than all this flashy fun stuff in your face to distract you. If you're ready to seek out more, more shortcuts, more plugins, more automations, you can really dress up your note plan and find additional ways for it to level up your productivity if you wanted to. One of the downsides to many productivity apps, especially when it comes to iPad, since the iPad is obviously a major productivity device for a lot of people, probably like the ones watching this video, I'm sure, is that many productivity apps, especially ones that have Markdown, do not have handwriting support with Apple Pencil, or if they do, it's kind of a poor attempt at it. But in NotePlan, you can sketch and draw right inside a note. So on iPad, you can use the Apple Pencil, and actually on iPhone, you can simply draw using your finger if you wanted. But what's even cooler is that NotePlan can recognize your handwriting using AI and turn it into text. On iPadOS and iOS, simply tap the command icon and then tap the freehand drawing icon. Draw whatever you want, tap done, and ta-da! Your drawing is now available inside your note. You can also transcribe your handwritten text into drawing. Simply long press your image and choose transcribe from the menu. No plan can even recognize tasks, you know, things that you write with circles, bullet points, you know, points or dashes, 
and check boxes if you draw square boxes and as them right inside your notes. This becomes really handy. For instance, if you're in a meeting or something, you can take notes with your Apple Pencil and just having your iPad flat on the table, it makes you look a lot more attentive. And then with AI transcription, you don't have to worry about having to type out your notes later. If you like the look of your notes and tasks being typed out, but with the benefit of handwriting, you can even just delete the image of your handwriting afterwards to leave behind your task and notes that were previously converted. This is such a really cool feature. I love how quick and fast and accurate it recognizes the check boxes and the tasks and the bullet points. It kind of blows my mind really. And I love, love, love this feature in Noteplan because one of the benefits of iPad for me is using an Apple Pencil and is writing on the iPad. And I don't have to sacrifice that with Noteplan like I've had to in the past with other productivity apps. There is so much under the surface of Noteplan that I won't be able to cover in just one video. So if you'd love to learn and see more about how I'm using Noteplan, I'd love it if you could let me know down in the comments. It's a great tool for anyone who wants a flexible system for organizing their notes, tasks, and projects all in one place. Thanks again to Noteplan for partnering with me on this video so I could share all the cool stuff that I learned about the app. That's it for today's video, and I will see you around on the internet very, very soon. Thank you so, so much for watching and until next time, bye.